Hi guys, welcome back to another nail video on my channel. This is going to be an in-depth video all about how you can do your own nails at home, how I do my own nails at home. And I'm going to be using your questions from the comments to kind of guide this video. I really do my best to try and answer all the questions that you guys leave me in the comments. I try to be as in-depth as I can when I'm filming these videos, but sometimes I'm literally sitting here for six hours doing my nails. So there's a lot of cuts, there's a lot of edits that happen for these nail videos, and sometimes I cut out things that I think aren't too important and then those end up being the questions that you guys ask or I'm showing you something that I think is self-explanatory but then it ends up being a question in the comments so I'm gonna try and be a little bit more thorough in this video also very big disclaimer I'm pretty sure most of you know but if you don't know if you're new here I am not a professional nail tech I have no professional license in this no professional training everything that I know is because I taught myself I've watched YouTube videos I've read things on the internet on TikTok. So I try to do my best in sharing the most factual information, but I'm not a professional. Everything I know is because I taught myself. So just remember that when you're watching my videos, I really do hope they're helpful, but just know I'm not a professional. With all that being said, if you do enjoy nail content on my channel, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and also make sure you're subscribed before we get into it. So if you're doing your own nails at home, you're also gonna wanna know how to remove them as well. So that's what we're gonna start with. I already removed my right hand off camera. Now I'm gonna go ahead and remove these nails on camera with you guys. So there's two different ways I like to remove my gel extensions. One is using the bowl method and the other is using aluminum foil. But before I do any of those methods, I always like to go in and remove the gel polish as well as some of the bulk of the gel extension. And to do that, I'm going to be using my e-file with my coarse carbide bit. So this one really helps cut through all that gel polish and some of the bulk of the nail. Since I'm using this on the gel extensions and not my natural nail, I like to put the speed up pretty high just so that I faster so I'm putting the speed on 20 and I'm gonna start filing off these gel extensions I almost forgot another way to cut down on time is to actually cut the tips of the nails so you can cut them as short as your natural nail so that you're not just filing the area that's going to be cut off anyway if that makes sense so I'm gonna go ahead and snip these off using my nail tip cutter and my nails are pretty short so I'm just going all the way to my fingertip basically so now I have less to file and less to soak off. So now that my nails look like this, I'm gonna go ahead and soak them off. For this video, I'm gonna be using the bowl method, but another way that I like to remove my nails is the aluminum foil method, which I showed you guys in my last video. So for today, I'm going to be using this bowl method. I actually got this set of two bowls off Amazon. I'll make sure to have these in my Amazon storefront as well as everything I use in this video. If I can't find the Amazon link, I'll try to link it individually as well in the description box. So always check there for the products I use. But this bowl I really like because it actually has this second compartment here. And underneath it is a little compartment that you can put hot water in and then you close it back up and put the acetone on top. So I'm gonna go fill this up with some like boiling not boiling but super super hot water okay so I filled this with hot water now I'm going to put the top back on and now I'm just going to fill this bowl with acetone definitely make sure you're using pure acetone and not just regular nail polish You don't have to fill it all the way either because this is only for the tips of your nails. You don't wanna like soak your whole hand in acetone. Acetone's very, very drying, so use as little as you possibly can. But I'm gonna go ahead and stick my fingers in here to soak. It is currently 102, by the way, and I'm gonna check how well they're doing at 110. It should be good by then, and then I can scrape it off. Okay, since it's been a few minutes now, I'm going to remove my hand and you guys can see how dry my skin around the cuticle area is. But I'm gonna go ahead and start scraping off these gel extensions. You guys can see they're kind of like mushy and gushy and we're gonna see how soft they are. I'm using this little metal cuticle scraper. Here we go. And I'm just gonna start scraping away. It should come off really easily if you find that it's a little bit tough to come off, like this is actually kind of tough down here, and you might wanna re-soak them for just a little bit longer. So 
So I've scraped off as much gel as I can and I don't have that much left so I'm not going to re-soak my nails. Instead, I'm going to remove whatever's left with my e-file and a medium grit sanding band. And here is the e-file that I use. I love this one so much. I love that it has this little like digital screen here. It tells you how fast it's going, the speed. And you can also push this dial in and it goes in forward mode or reverse mode. Um, the only problem with this e-file is I don't have a brand name for it. I can't ever link it. Everybody's always asking me to link it. I can't because I don't know where it's from. I bought it from a local nail supply store and it, I don't even know. Even the box that it came in was just like this really plain box. It just had no label, no marking on it. It was only, I think, 25 or 30 bucks. Questions about this e-file are probably the most popular on my nail videos and I know I did not give you guys the answer you wanted right now, but I will link a similar one that I find on Amazon in the description box below. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and just file off the rest of this gel. And since I am using this on my natural nails now, I'm definitely going to lower the speed and be a lot more gentle on my nails. So I'm gonna put this down to eight, so that should be fine. <laughs> Okay, now that all that gel is removed, I'm just putting some cuticle oil on my fingers just to get rid of this dryness. And then we're gonna start doing some cuticle care. So next I'm going to be applying this cuticle softener. And then I'm going to push back my cuticles using this metal cuticle scraper. So next I'm just going to file and buff my nails to prep them for the gel extensions. So now that my nail prep is all done, I'm gonna go ahead and start applying my gel extensions. I'm using these short stiletto nails from Apray. I actually really like these. I used them for the first time in my last nail set and I really like the length and shape of them. So we're gonna use them again today. Okay, so one of the most important things about gel extensions is making sure you actually find the right size extension for your nail. You don't want to have a nail extension that is too small and you have to put a lot of pressure to actually make it fit. And then you don't want to pick one that is too big and like lays over your skin. But if you can't find the perfect size, you should always go with the bigger nail extension and then you can customize it by filing around the cuticle area to make it fit your nail bed. And that's pretty much what I have to do for my thumbnails when I apply my nails. So this is a size one in the Apray extensions. It is a little bit bigger than my natural nail bed, so it would sit on my skin but we don't want that to happen so i'm going to go ahead and just file around the cuticle area to give it a better fit i'm just using my nail file to shape it up little by little and then slowly see if it is the right size for my nail bed so now i have a nail extension that fits my natural nail bed perfectly now i'm just going to size out the rest of my nails So I'm using my e-file and a medium grit sanding band and I'm going to file all around the cuticle area of every extension. This is going to help thin out the cuticle area and prevent lifting which is going to make your nails last longer and just make the grow out process way more seamless. Another thing I like to do to prep my gel extensions is to apply this Gel X Tip Primer. This is going to etch the inside of the nails and make it adhere to your natural nail way longer and way better. If you don't have this primer, you can always use a regular nail primer or you could just file it with an e-file or if you have like a small file that fits inside, you can just etch the inside. Etching it is just kind of like roughing it up so that it grips to the nail better.
Now that the gel extensions are all prepped, it's time to prep my natural nails. I'm going to be using this bonder and primer duo from A Prey. Nail bonder or dehydrator and primer are really important, especially for Gel X nails, to make sure that your nails last as long as they possibly can. I cover my entire nail bed with this bonder and it kind of just dehydrates my nail, removes any oils so that the nail extension sticks really good on here. Next is primer. Next, I'm going to apply a thin layer of my nail extension glue on my natural nails before I put the nail extensions on. This is the sensitive version of the Extend Glue from A Prey. I also do have my UV lamp right here. It's just off camera. But after I apply this Extend Gel to my natural nails, I'm going to cure my fingers for 60 seconds. And before I cure my nails, I like to take a thin nail art brush and dip it in acetone or alcohol. This is alcohol, and I just like to remove any gel that I've gotten around my skin. Having gel on your skin can cause a reaction. And then I'm going to cure this for 60 seconds. And a lot of you guys have said that you like when I include me doing both of my hands in my nail videos. So I'll make sure to try and include both hands for all the videos I make going forward. Sometimes it's just easier to show one hand because it's faster. But if you guys like it, I can definitely do that for you. Especially when it comes to doing nail art with your non-dominant hand, that can definitely be a challenge. So I know it is nice to see kind of both sides of it and not just the one perfect hand that comes out <laughs> of each set. I'm going to quickly clean this up. And then cure. Okay, and finally, let's move on to the gel extension application. So I have my gooseneck lamp here. This is what it looks like. I really like it because you can adjust it, different heights, different positions, whatever. And this is what I use to flash cure my nails. I flash cure each nail as I put it on. And then once all the nails on each hand are on, I go ahead and put my whole hand under the big UV lamp and cure for 60 seconds. So you guys can see there's a little button here and then it has the little UV slash LED light. This little purple light right here is what cures the nails. So I'm just going to move that off to the side and I will be using that same gel extension glue. Also one of you lovely viewers, I think her name was Julie, she suggested that I start working from my pinky towards my thumb, which is the opposite of what I normally do, but it makes sense since you use these fingers less. And we use our pointer finger and our thumb more, so it helps with stability. Okay, so to apply the gel extension glue on the nail extension, I like to put a thin layer of it down all over the part of the gel extension that is going to sit on my nail bed. So just this cuticle area right here, I put a thin layer. And then I scrape a little bit of that gel extension glue right in the center of the nail. Just like that, it creates a little bubble and it kind of helps fill in the gel extension so that you don't have any air bubbles when you apply them to your nails. So. And then I like to apply mine kind of like on a 45 degree angle and then I watch for the gel extension glue to reach the tip of my nail and then I go ahead and put it under the light to cure. I usually flash cure for maybe 10 to 15 seconds until I feel that it's secure on my nail. And then I go ahead and remove it from the light. Now I just repeat that same process to all of my nails until I have all the extensions on. So I put a thin layer of glue making sure I get it from sidewall to sidewall and then I put a little pocket of glue down the center of the nail. I go ahead and place that on my finger gently and slowly apply some pressure and then cure it. And this one, I don't know if you guys can see, but some glue did seep out around the cuticle area, which isn't a big deal because I can always go back in and file it off. The biggest problem for me is making sure that I don't have any air bubbles because that will cause lifting. 
So here's some of that gel extension glue that seeped out, but once all my nails are on, I'll go back in and file around the cuticles to remove any excess glue. Okay, so my camera ended up dying, but I just went ahead and applied the rest of my gel extensions. After I flash cured using my gooseneck lamp, I did put my whole entire hand under the big UV lamp for 60 seconds on each hand. And then as I mentioned earlier, I did have some extra gel that squirted out around my cuticle area, so I'm going to remove that. And I also will just file around the cuticle to seal the cuticle, make sure everything is nice and smooth and seamless. And I will be using my e-file with my carbide bit. So I'm gonna repeat that on my right hand using my non-dominant hand. And one of the biggest challenges I feel like when you're doing your own nails at home is being able to use your non-dominant hand to do your opposite hand. And one tip that I have is to try to be as steady as possible. I like to keep my hand on something like this. This is just like a little hand rest. And then I also try to move my dominant hand almost more than I'm using my non-dominant hand, which is the hand that I have the tool in. I also always make sure I use my e-file on a super low speed. It's literally on speed five. And if you're not comfortable with that, you can even go slower or you can just use a nail file instead to get the cuticles sealed as best as you can. If you are a little bit intimidated about using an e-file around your cuticles, which I totally understand, that was definitely me when I first started out, you can always use a regular nail file. I like using ones that have a little bit of a curve to them, and this kind of helps you get around the cuticle area a little more smoothly. For me, this takes a little bit more time, but it does get the job done, and it prevents you from damaging your cuticles with the e-file. But since I feel comfortable using the e-file, I'm gonna go ahead and and do that. Okay, cuticles are done. Now I'm just going to file my nails just a little bit. I really just want to remove the like super sharpness of the nail tips and they have this like little tack at the end. I'm gonna remove that. And then I'm also going to use my cute little heart shaped nail buffer to remove the shine on all of my nails. I really don't need to do too much with these nails because I really like the shape, the length, the narrowness, everything of them. Like I mentioned earlier, when I'm using my non-dominant hand, which is the hand holding the nail file right now, I normally will move my opposite hand, which is this one, more than I'm moving my non-dominant hand and filing is a great example of that. So I'll pretty much hold the nail file steady and I'm going to move my opposite hand to actually file my nail. And now I'm just going to buff my nails to remove the shine. Removing the shine from the gel extensions will help the gel polish stick to the nail and prevent it from lifting. So now my nails are completely ready to be polished, but I wanted to give you guys a time update because I started doing my nails at 12.30 and it is currently six o'clock in the evening. And I just wanted to share that with you guys because a lot of you guys appreciate it that I shared that in my last video, especially as a beginner. It can take pretty long to do your own nails. Sometimes I would even do one hand one day and then do the other hand the next day just because it would take me so long. And I'm a pretty slow worker, so it's been two years since I started doing my own nails and it still takes me quite a while, especially if I want to do like a real intricate design. Thankfully, Today I'm going to be doing something super simple. I actually got these little airbrush stickers. Like they're supposed to imitate the airbrush effect, but I just want to do a simple set of these airbrush effect nails. Hopefully these stickers actually work and look like the actual airbrush. 
An airbrush machine is definitely something I want to invest some money into. So I am using this nude color from the brand Gelish. A lot of you guys had questions on this color as well. It is called Creme de la Femme. I usually find this at Sally's Beauty Supply. You can obviously also buy it on Amazon. So I'm going to go ahead and cure this for 60 seconds. Okay, one hand is cured and it's actually the next morning, you guys, because it is 8 o'clock in the morning the next day because I tried out the sticker design thing I wanted to do, but it does not look the way that I imagined. Like, you can clearly see it's a sticker and I wanted it to look more like flush to the nail. I don't like the way that it looks, so I'm going to try and remove this and I'm going to do this like eyeshadow airbrush method that you guys will see in a little bit but i'm no longer going to be doing that little sticker design i showed you guys but anyway i gotta go ahead and finish painting this side of my nails and then we'll talk about the design in a second I'm actually going to be using some eyeshadow palettes to do this airbrush design. I'm going to show you guys a little TikTok that I saw when I was looking up different ways to do airbrush nails yesterday. So I found this girl on TikTok. Her username is Bora Blueprint. And look how she does her nails. I'll link her video down below. I'll try to actually. I didn't even, I don't think I followed her. I saved it to my phone, but you can search her name on TikTok, Bora Blueprint. She does a bunch of different nail designs and these came out so cute. Okay, I'm kind of thinking I'm gonna stick to the sunset vibe and work with these colors over here. And some of these are shimmers, so it'll look really pretty. And here goes nothing. We're gonna see how this turns out. I did have to wipe down my nails a little bit because I got so much lint and fuzz on them. So hopefully they're still like sticky enough for the polish to stick. And I think I'm just gonna start with this pink color here, pink moon. So this is obviously not working the way that it worked for her. Okay, I'm going into problem solve mode because I really want this to work. So I think I'm going to put another layer of this nude polish on. Maybe my nails are too transparent right now. So the color from the eyeshadow is not showing up the way I want it to. So I'm going to go ahead and do a second coat on all of my nails and then get back to the eyeshadow stuff. Okay, we're back in action. I have my second coat on. This time I'm only going to do one hand at a time to avoid getting a bunch of fuzzies. And I'm going to go ahead and start putting the eyeshadow on my nails and see how it works. I'm going to start with my thumb and let's see how this turns out. So much better, actually. Look at the color payoff. So much better. Okay, now I'm happy. Now this is, this is exciting. So if you are trying to do this, don't be like me. Just do one hand at a time so you can get what you're actually going for. So much better. Look at that color payoff. I'm going to use the same brush, but I'm going to wipe it off a little bit in between colors. And next, I think I'm going to go in with this sunset orangey color here. I'm going to do it up here. And then I think I'm going to add some yellow from this other palette. Yeah, I guess we're going with sunset nails because I like this little color scheme. So this is what my nails look like so far. I think this is a really cool airbrush hack. I'm gonna go ahead and put a top coat on them and then cure them for 60 seconds. I'm gonna use this diamond top coat from Gelfully.
and then I'm gonna cure this for 60 seconds. So I painted the second coat of new polish on my other hand. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do this little eyeshadow airbrush design with my non-dominant hand. This actually would be a really easy design to do for a beginner or somebody who's just not as strong with their dominant hand when it comes to designs because you're literally just patting on eyeshadow. It's really so simple and I think it's so cute. I was debating if I wanted to do this hand a totally separate color, but I think I'm gonna stick with the little sunset vibe I have going on. But you could literally make up any color scheme, any pattern, do anything. You could also really pack on the eyeshadow to make it more bold and more colorful or just keep it more simple. You could even just use one color. You could do so many different things with this. Right now I'm just adding the glitter eyeshadow and then I'm gonna add the pink. Now I'm just gonna do the top coat on this hand and cure for 60 seconds. And your nails are never complete until you put on some cuticle oil. So I'm using this little pen from Sally Hansen. I like this one because it's like more of like a jelly. It's easier to control where you're putting it and it smells so good. And here is the finished product of my little eyeshadow hack airbrush nails. I think they came out really pretty and it's so cool that they're literally made with eyeshadow. Here are my thumbs. I'm gonna try and get some pictures of these outside. I feel like they're gonna look so different in natural daylight. Let me know in the comment section if you've tried this eyeshadow hack, if you would wear this design, if you like this design, just leave a comment down below. But I hope you did enjoy this video. I hope it was helpful and I'll see you guys all in my next video. Bye.